and a very pleasant Tuesday evening to everybody. Welcome to Ridgecrest Talk right here on KZGN. And as usual on Tuesday night, our theme is sports. And tonight we have not one, but two Saracoso baseball players with us. We have one local and one from out of town. This is Angel Godinez, and this is Rashad Jones. Angel is right from local here. Rashad is from the Las Vegas area, a graduate of Burroughs High School. Both members are playing for the Coyotes right now, and we're kind of three quarters through our season, and both of these guys have pretty much been in a whole bunch of games throughout the season, so they can uh, have a lot of stories to tell. It's been kind of a, a rebuilding year in many ways. Uh, Justice Scott, first year coach, has come in and done an admirable job, and these guys uh, ha have really picked up and, and done pretty well themselves. But let's um, let's talk about just school in general, and we'll start with you, Rashad. Tell us about life at the community college when, let's just say, we don't have the door and on-campus things that maybe some would have, California not many, but talk about how, how this has been academically for you and everything else. Well, it's, it's just different. It's a different change in life for me, you know. Um, I had to mature quickly and, and I just had to crack down on my schoolwork and just stay ahead of the game. That's, that's my... Um, that's what I say a lot. Stay ahead of the game because I, I you know, I just want to stay here two years and get onto a, a bigger university and move on with life. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Angel, what about you? I know you're from here, so that makes a little bit of a, you know, difference for you. you've got to support, um, you know, so to say here that a lot of people that are from out of the area maybe don't have. But talk about your experience uh, at the community college level so far. Uh, my experience is great. I mean. Uh, I, most of my time I just I spend on schoolwork and you know hanging out at the college with my friends and stuff but uh, I mainly just concentrate on my grades and whatnot and you know like Rashad said staying ahead of the game is what you gotta do I mean in order to be eligible you know um, but it, it is a little different for me because you know I have my family here to support and uh, help me out with things and it's a little harder for them too because they don't have that out here they don't have that uh, opportunity so but you know it's great it's great uh, being out here you know uh, just playing college baseball, going to school, so it's all fun. It's all fun. It's all fun. Well, that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. I know you guys enjoy playing. Rashad, let's go to you uh, with this next question. Now, talk about the difference between high school baseball and community college baseball. Even though California is non-scholarship, let's talk about um, how it was a year ago for you and how it is now. Well, it's a huge difference. Um, as a pitcher, you know, um, you in high school I was able to just throw anywhere like down the middle and not really hitting my spots but now as a college pitcher I have to really hit my spots and I have to keep the ball low and and throw my off speed for a strike if not I'll continue to keep getting hurt like I've been getting hurt this year so I'm glad I'm here because it's just a stepping stone for next year so I could be better. Now did you in high school did you play varsity uh, three years or two years? I, I played varsity two years. Okay. All right Angel let's talk about you and I know you played over at Burroughs High School kind of a, a double sport athlete. Talk about your uh, your high school days and then talk about uh, the differences you see between high school and community college. Oh man high school was the funnest thing ever. Um, the difference between I guess high school ball and college ball, community college ball, is, 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 it's faster. You pick up speed. Uh, guys throw harder, move faster, you hit harder. You're just all around stronger. And uh, you, you become more collectively as a team. You work better. And it's just you're with guys you've never played with before. Unlike high school, you're with guys you played with for four years. Um, but when you get to college, it's just a whole different scene. You meet new guys, meet new friends, and uh, you just... You guys all collab, you know, to win and to do the best you can on the field. So that's just the that's the biggest difference I've seen between high school and college. Just new people, new team, you know, just got it's like starting over. And like you said, it's a stepping stone just for next year to get better, to move on to the next level. So now at Burroughs you played football. I did. Let's talk about uh football versus baseball and your thoughts on the two sports. Uh football and baseball, huge difference. 
uh, same concept. Uh, we're all out there to win, compete, all be competitive, and uh, it's just football. It's just a different, I guess you would say, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, both are competitive. I know football really can tax up the hours. Yeah, yeah, it does. Football does tax up the hours. You're out there on the field multiple hours a day, four or five hours a day with your family, uh, your brothers. Everybody's just out there. And uh, there's no other feeling like a Friday Night Lights, but at the same time, there's no other feeling than waking up in the morning and still on the fresh cut grass when you're about to play a game of baseball. So it's uh, it's it's different, but at the same time, it's the same thing because, like I said, you're there with your friends, your family, and you're, you're just there to win and compete. So. Mm-hmm. Rashad, uh, did you play any other sports? I know you're a pretty good basketball player. I did. I played basketball. I actually made varsity my sophomore year. So, um, yeah. Okay, so you're a multiple sport athlete also then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the one thing you miss most about high school, Rashad? Um, The most I really miss about high school is um, just, just being there, you know, just having fun, you know. It, I, I had a lot of fun in high school, a lot of friends, you know, along with being a two-sport athlete and, um, you know, just all the teachers loving you and all that. Uh, I just had fun in high school, and that's what I missed the most about it. Okay, Angel, besides uh, girlfriends, what do you miss the most? <laughs> uh, the thing I miss most about high school, uh, I would say I would say friends. I mean, coming out of high school, you you just lose connection with everybody. You know, and you have your closest crew, and then, but you know, all the people that you used to be super close to are now acquaintances. Mm -hmm. You don't talk to them much. I mean, everybody's out doing their own thing, you know, going to college, working, you know, so just uh, being close with a lot of people was probably the biggest thing. Okay, Angel. All right, we're going to take our first break. When we come back, we're going to talk more about Saracoso baseball, talk a little bit about the Foothill Conference. So don't go away. This is a Tuesday night. Our theme is sports. This is Ridgecrest Talk. Tom Heck and a couple of Saracoso baseball players come back at you after this timeout. And welcome back. If you just tuned in, this is Sarah Co- uh, Baseball Players. We've got a guy that went to Burroughs High School and Angel Godinez, Rashad Jones from the Las Vegas area. I'm Tom Heck, and welcome. We've been talking a little bit about their high school days versus community college, some of the adjustments they have to make in the two of them, uh, high school versus college. And academically, let me ask you one more thing. Academically, how did how do you see the community college level compared to high school? Can you study the same and get the same results, or is it much tougher uh, than it was in high school? Go ahead, Angel. Well, you know, uh, there is a difference between college and high school. I mean, there's not much, but it's what it is. Especially being an athlete, you have to work more. You got to be willing to put in more hours, more hours of your school work because it's it's less time in the day. You know. You got practice for three hours a day, and then you got class right after practice. So you have that one to two hours every night to get in that homework that you can. So it's it's a little harder, I would say, but at the same time, it's just you got to be mental about it. It's it's all mental. That's something that uh, Coach Scott would say. It's all about being mental, uh, mentally strong. So it's uh, it's definitely hard, but it you could it could be done. Mm-hmm. It could be done. Rashad, your thoughts on that? Um. Well, high school wasn't really a challenge for me, but um, college is it's a huge challenge, you know. Um, I have to really study harder in college, you know, because in high school, like, the teachers, you know, they, they helped you a lot and all that, you know, like, they were there for you, but now here at college, you know, it's, it's different, it's, it's different, so. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I ask you what you miss the most, but um, when it comes to, you know, just overall, you know, a long day in high school versus community college, sometimes you can take a few classes and go home. What do you like best? Do you like going home, coming back, going home, coming back? Um, or do you like just kind of hanging out all day long at one spot? Well, I like to um, go home and come back. Mm-hmm. And I, I, would, I would prefer going home and coming back because you got that little time span, you know get other things done other than school and stuff like that. I mean, take a nap, mm-hmm. eat, you know, so it's just, it's a little better than going the whole six hours mm-hmm. 
at, at a high school. So, all right, let's talk about the Foothill Conference this year, and um, and we'll just kind of be realistic about everything. The Foothill Conference traditionally not one of the stronger in the state. And that's not just this year, that's kind of the way it's been. And we base that on a thing called RPI, which, long story short, is basically a power ranking based on how teams in your conference have fared in the non-conference season against schools outside of your own conference. And traditionally, we have struggled as a group. Now, the Foothill Conference used to be nine teams. It's now down to seven teams. And this year, there was only one team before we started league play that was over 500 and that was Rio Hondo so right now the RPI the power rating is rock bottom for the Foothill Conference now what can that mean or not mean well what it could mean is that if it came to be where well, there were a couple of wild cards when they come up with the number of teams for the playoffs they would go to the leagues that had the best RPIs and maybe take a third or even a fourth team from there. Now every team pretty much is guaranteed two teams and the Foothill will have two teams and and it wasn't all that long ago where there wasn't that guarantee for two. So there were years where we really were nail biting to get that second team in. I believe in the last 15 years there's only been one time where three teams have gotten in from the foothill. So with that said, that's just kind of a little prelude, um, but the community college level is still, and I think you guys would agree with me, a couple notches above the high school level just because you have a, you know, a, a selection of people that have much more experience. You get some kickbacks once in a while, players that maybe played at a four-year then came back. But let's talk about the teams in the foothill. Let's go to you first, Angel. Your opinion of the league right now. My opinion of the league. Uh, we got some. We got some good teams in the league. I mean, uh, every team we played has been competitive. So there's no doubt there's some talent in our league. Uh, guys throw hard. I mean, the game. The game's just fast pace. Um, my honest opinion is, I think we could win the league. I think we can. In in the next next year, year after that, it's it's possible. Um, these teams are also competitive. That it's just it comes down to the better team. You know, the more compact we are, the better the family. It's just, it's all there. So that's that's my opinion on that. Mm -hmm. Rashad, what do you think? Oh, I think the same thing as Angel. You know, um, it's all about confidence and trusting in each other. You know, um, we don't have to be the biggest. You know, or like the best. If we if we have heart and if we trust each other, I feel like we can win the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Well, currently, this year we've struggled. We do have a one. We have won a victory over Chafee, which traditionally is one of the better teams this year. Not quite what they've been, but still competitive. I would say, in all the years I've been here, this is my 14th year here, and have pretty much been to almost every home game, and I would say at least half the away games covering stuff on radio uh, and internet, that this year I think, um, you know, Rio Hondo looks very competitive. San Bernardino always hits the ball, and no matter what year, they just seem to have hitters. Some years pitching weak, some years pitching mediocre. They've really never had great pitching there, but they've always had people that just somehow have a knack to get their batting average up, and they've hit, they hit home runs uh, big time. Oh. I think this year, as a team, they have 17 or 18, and we as a team have not hit one yet. Barstow has not hit a home run yet. Uh, one home run for uh, the team we just got through playing Desert, mm -hmm. and that happened uh, two weeks ago. So, uh, in the community college level, to have 17, 18, maybe 19 now after yesterday home runs it, is pretty significant. But uh, besides them, Barstow, I think, has improved some. We've had a couple of very close games with yes. Barstow that could have gone either way. We've had a couple of close games with Desert that could have gone either way. We'll talk about uh, Saturday's game in our third session when we come back. Uh, so, we really uh, besides a few games have not been blown out uh, the problem is we just sometimes when it comes to getting key things or making too many errors that's been our trouble and no. Angel uh, how does a team overcome that 
Uh, you know, it's just like like Coach would say. It's just mental. It's all mental. You know, if you think you can do it, you can do it. You know, you think you're not going to make an error, you're not going to make an error. You know, it's just a stand in front of the ball. You know, um, you know, biting up against everything that comes at you, swinging the bats. Of course, um, that's how you win baseball games. You just get it done, mm -hmm. and um, that's 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 I believe how you get everything done. It's like it's just all in your mind, all in your mind. Rashad, what do you think? I'll have to go with Angel on that note. It's the same thing. Mental, really a tough thing to overcome sometimes, huh? Yes. Okay. And, and baseball is mental. Even we've heard big leaguers talk about that. And when we come back, I do want to ask you about Major League Baseball. What do you guys think of it today with the huge salaries and all? So don't go away. We'll be right back in just a few minutes. I'm Tom Heck on this Tuesday night. Angel Godinez from Ridgecrest and Rashad Jones from the Las Vegas area, several members of the Saracoso baseball team. Back after this time out, don't go away. This is... KZGN Sports. And welcome back, Ridgecrest Talk on a Tuesday night. I am Tom Hicks, several members of the Saracoso baseball team with me. We've uh, kind of talked about an assortment of things, but I want to talk a little bit now, guys, um, about the game that we played last Saturday. Now, we talked about how important mental parts can be. We were up 6 to nothing going into the fourth inning. And actually, we were up 6 nothing going into the third inning when Desert had runners on second and third and nobody out, and we shut them down with nobody out. Then, in the next inning, in the fourth inning, we're still up 6 to nothing. They loaded the bases again. Well, they loaded the bases first, second, and third. And then what happened is something that doesn't happen every day. Only the second time I've ever seen it at this level, a triple play. Yep. A triple play. With the bases loaded, a soft line drive, a low line drive to our third baseman who was playing a little bit more up than I thought he would be and made a nice catch right off his shoestrings. The catch was good. The umpire sealed it right away. The runner from third had broken and now tried to get back. They step on third, which is two outs now. Throw to first. Triple play. The jam is over. What do you think? Uh, it's just This is a great play. It's just a great play. Uh, have you seen one or had one before in competition? Uh, my, my Myself, I've never had one, uh, but I've seen one before. Probably maybe once or twice. It rarely ever happens. But uh, Chad Butler did make a great play, our third baseman. Uh, it was just a bang, bang. It was quick. It was quick. So, Rashad, what about you? Have you seen a triple player been in a game with one? I've never been in a game with one, but I have seen one on ESPN before. <laughs> on ESPN. <laughs> ESPN. Okay, so that was the first. Now, I won't say it was the first, but it doesn't happen very often. And then in the fifth inning, another thing that doesn't happen very often happened. We gave up eight runs in one inning, and we had 14 men, 14 men come to the plate. They had, out of those 14 guys that came to the plate, they had seven hits. That's an awful lot of hits. So we gave up the eight runs, and that was actually the final score, eight to six. Your thoughts? My thoughts on that is we, we played a great baseball game. I wouldn't say great, we played a good baseball game. Um, we went seven innings, seven shutout innings with them where they scored nothing. And it's just that one inning, it was walks, pitchers weren't throwing strikes, um, and they were giving up hits. I mean, obviously they're going to hit the ball, but it was just, like I said, it's, just, it's, it's a mental thing, compounding errors after errors, which I don't think we had any errors that game. Nope, nothing yeah. really. You know, if you consider an Angel, I thought, caught a, a very good game. He's a very good, he's a catcher, very good backstop, keeps the ball in front of him, uh, he just sacrifices his body. Did have a catcher's interference where I guess yeah, the love hit the bat. And I think they rule that an error, but I'm, I haven't got 100% clarification. I believe they do. So that was really the only hiccup yesterday, and that's a tough call sometimes because you don't know the length of a guy's swing that often, and you try to be as, you know, as competitive as possible possible be in that zone up there but uh, 
you know, eight runs is, you know, it, it does not that common, but it happens. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, we threw a few walks, but, you know, give Desert credit. They yeah, had a lot it, of solid hits, hits in that hit. inning. Rashad, what did you think? Um, well, it was just baseball, you know, gave up. You know, it was going to come around when they, the teams are going to hit the ball, and it was just one of those innings where they hit the ball, and we walked. We walked too many people at the wrong time, so, yeah. Yeah, a lot of walks at the wrong time is probably, you know, correct. Now, another thing happened that doesn't happen very often at all, and maybe a first. Desert hit eight Saracoso batters. Eight oh, yeah. batters. Six of those batters were hit in the first six innings. Now, you go figure that one. Now, we almost felt like pinatas out there. I mean, they weren't knockdown pitches. You know, a lot of breaking pitches that mm -hmm. didn't really break. They <laughs> just ran right into the, into the player. But that's kind of rare, isn't it, Rashad? It is. Angel, have you ever seen eight hit in one game by one team? Never eight, never eight. But I've seen a couple, maybe mm -hmm. four at the most, at the most, but never eight. Mm -hmm. There were a few other odd things that happened also, but Desert went on to, to get the win. All right, I want to, in our last few minutes, talk about Major League Baseball. All right, Rashad, you know, you're in a, from a different generation than I am. Salaries today are just absolutely crazy. Um, TV money now has completely changed things. It wasn't this way 20 years ago. It certainly wasn't this way 30 years ago. Really in the last 10 years we have seen things just go off the map when it comes to salaries. Do you think that maybe things are a little out of control or your thoughts? Well, honestly I really don't think it's getting out of control because I feel like these players, they earned that money, you know. They put in the hard work to get to where they are, and, you know. Um, I feel like it's just a reward for them for working so hard, and and basically they they made it, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, $300 million <laughs> a year more, yes. Okay, Angel, your thoughts on that? Uh, my thoughts on, on the salary rates is just... It can go. It can go both ways. Like I think, just some you know professional players, not just baseball in general, but even you know NBA players, professional basketball players. That there's a lot of players that ask for too much. Although, like Rashad said, they do work hard and they do you know put forth the effort to deserve the money that they want. But you know, it's just it's. I I don't know. It's just I feel like it's just too much money that we're giving out mm -hmm. to them. And you look back, and, you know, again, I guess, depending on how old you are, you look back at Mickey Mantle, guys like Harmon Killebrew, <laughs> guys that were the all-stars back in the day, Roger Maris and Denny McLean, who won 31 games, the last 31-game winner in Major League Baseball, last 30-game winner in Major League Baseball. And those guys were all making well under 150000 a year, well under that, I should say. That was tops. You know, a lot of them, I think Yastrzemski, until maybe his last couple years, was right around $80,000 a year. A lot of those guys had to have second jobs. Mm -hmm. Even the All-Stars had to have second jobs in the wintertime. So, now... Should they have been given more money? Well, probably, but back then you didn't have all the TV rights and everything else as you do now. The owners, they had that lockout. The owners wanted a salary cap. They saw this coming back in 1993, but the players, they were the order of the lockout stopped, the Supreme Justices did by a 3-2 count. If that wouldn't have happened, I don't know what would have happened, but now you can just rely on Fox for, well, here here's $800 million, and <laughs> this is for this year, and you can pay your players out of that, and we get all TV rights, and so it's dramatically changed, and without going any more in my soap opera box with that. But, um, Angel, one, before, one more question for you before we, we sign off tonight. Your hopes and, and dreams um, after community college days. Uh, my hopes and dreams after community college, you know, um, honestly, after this, I'm going to play another year of baseball. If nothing doesn't happen with baseball, I'm going to go pursue my education. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to become a, a parole officer and then hopefully uh, get my degree in as also business administration to own my own business, a little family business, and uh, just uh, finish school and then hopefully in the nearby future have some kids, a wife, get married, you know. So those are my hopes and dreams. All right. Rashad, what about you? 
Um, well, of course, like like Angel said, I'm gonna play some more baseball. But um, after community college, I would love to go to the next level and play baseball. But if that doesn't happen, I'll just get my education in uh, music production and try to become a producer and um, have a family, give back to the community, um, you know, take care of my family, and um, just live life the right way. All right, Rashad, appreciate that. Well, our time's about up. We appreciate everybody tuning in tonight, and maybe down the future here, we'll have the two on again. And you can stay tuned next Tuesday night. Our theme is sports. We'll have a special guest. Glad you're with us tonight. Appreciate Angel Godinez, graduate of Burroughs High School, Rashad Jones from the Las Vegas area, two members of Saracoso Baseball. Thank you, guys, and thank you for tuning in. Until next week. For the guys, I'm Tom Heck, bidding you a pleasant good evening for KZGN.